genes can be passed on from generation to generation. Remember, genes provide the genetic information that specifies the sequence of amino acids for one protein. Therefore, even though many of the following examples will simplify things and describe that a single gene is being inherited, or that the trait is controlled by a single gene, in reality, multiple genes are responsible for any single physical trait that we may see in offspring. We must first learn the following terms and their definitions for the exam and for the rest of this video to make sense. A gamete is a sex cell that contains half the number of chromosomes of a typical body cell. The human male gamete is the sperm cell and the female gamete is the egg cell. During fertilization, these combine to form a zygote with a complete set of chromosomes. A chromosome is made up of one long strand of DNA and they come in pairs. One chromosome is inherited from the biological father and one from the biological mother. In humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. We can describe that there is a gene for eye colour and an allele would describe the different versions of that gene. An oversimplification, but one of the main genes influencing eye colour, OCA2, can be found on the 15th chromosomal pair. The allele of that gene will be found on both chromosomes in the 15th pair. For example, the gene for eye colour has an allele for blue eye colour and an allele for brown eye colour in this example. A person could have two alleles for blue eye colour, one allele on one chromosome and one allele on the other chromosome, and be described as having a genotype that is homozygous. The genotype is the collection of alleles an individual has. You could have two alleles for brown eye colour, and again have a homozygous genotype. Finally, you could have an allele for blue eyes, and an allele for brown eyes, and say that you have a heterozygous genotype. Now, having both brown and blue-eyed alleles doesn't mean you will have one eye that is blue and one that is brown. Alleles can be dominant or recessive. A dominant allele is represented using a capital letter, and will always express itself in the heterozygote phenotype. The phenotype is a visible characteristics of an organism which occur as a result of its genes. A recessive allele is represented as a lowercase letter and will only be expressed in individuals who are homozygous recessive. They contain two recessive alleles and do not have a dominant allele that would take over the recessive allele and be expressed. In our eye colour example, the allele for brown eyes is dominant and the allele for blue eyes is recessive. This means blue-eyed people have a genotype that is homozygous recessive, which is represented by two lowercase letters. Brown-eyed people can have a genotype that is heterozygous or homozygous dominant. Gregor Mendel did many experiments with pea plants and started to show how genes are passed on and how the ratio of phenotypes produced in the offspring can tell us what the genotype of the parents were. We are going to use Punnett squares and start breeding some sweet pea plants. There is a gene that controls whether the peas come out round or wrinkled. If we crossbreed a pea plant that has round peas with a pea plant that has wrinkled peas and all the offspring have round peas, we can actually say that the round pea allele is dominant over the wrinkled recessive allele. This first generation of offspring is labelled as F1. Now, if we take one of these offspring and have it breed with itself in a process called selfing, you basically take the male gamete found in the pollen and fertilize the female gametes of the same plant. You notice that some of the next generation, which we now call the F2 generation, now both have round and wrinkled peas. Mendel actually started counting how many round peas he had versus wrinkled pea plants in his F2 generation, and he noticed he had three times more round peed plants than wrinkled pea producing plants. This 3 to 1 ratio is what happens when two heterozygous individuals breed. Now using a Punnett square we can show all of these crosses. So originally we had a homozygous dominant genotype, round pea plant, crossed with a homozygous recessive wrinkled pea plant, and when these produce gametes they half the number of chromosomes during meiosis. The columns represent the male gametes and the alleles they contain, and the rows of the table represent the female gametes and the alleles they contain. So, from the round pea plant, one dominant allele goes into one column, and the other dominant allele goes into the other column in our Punnett square. From the wrinkled plant, one recessive allele goes into one gamete and into the row, and the other recessive allele goes into the other row. Now, when we cross all these alleles, 
All the F1 offspring are heterozygous and contain one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Now, when we self one of these offspring, we repeat the process with the table. The male gametes produced by it have half the number of chromosomes, and so one dominant allele goes into one column and the other recessive allele goes into the other column. We repeat the same thing for the female gametes and one dominant allele goes into one row and the recessive allele goes into the other row. We do the cross and we get the phenotypical ratio of three times more round peas than wrinkled peas. From a genotype point of view, we get a quarter of the offspring being homozygous dominant, half being heterozygous, and the remaining quarter being homozygous recessive, classically known as the 1 to 2 to 1 genotypic ratio. The final example we'll explore is sex determination in humans. The 23rd chromosomal pair contains the sex chromosomes, which carry the genes that determine biological sex. These chromosomes are represented as X or Y. Females inherit an X chromosome from their mother and an X chromosome from their father, making their genotype XX. Males inherit an X chromosome from their mother and a Y chromosome from their father, resulting in the genotype XY. When females produce gametes, egg cells, the number of chromosomes is halved during meiosis, so all their gametes carry only X chromosomes. When males produce gametes, sperm cells, the chromosome number is also halved via meiosis, but half of the sperm carry an X chromosome and the other half carry a Y chromosome. During fertilization, the random nature of gamete combination means that there is an equal chance, 50%, that a sperm carrying either an X or Y chromosome will fuse with the egg cell. If the sperm carries an X chromosome, the resulting zygote will develop into a female XX genotype. If the sperm carries a Y chromosome, the zygote will develop into a male XY. We can represent this using a Punnett square. The columns represent the male gametes, X and Y, and the rows represent the female gametes, X and X. When we complete the Punnett square, it becomes clear that the phenotypic and genotypic ratio for offspring is 50-50 or simply one to one. This shows an equal likelihood of producing male and female offspring.